Okay, in this video, we'll be talking about something very serious. Please do not use Lapidus rule for this limit right here. And I will give you guys my best explanation possible. No Lapidus rule for this and also no Taylor series for this. And uh, hopefully after this video, we can settle it down, right? And please just ignore my shirt for now. Anyway, here we go. If we look at the limit as theta going to zero, and here of course we have the sign theta over theta. When we put zero into here and here, we get zero over zero. So it seems like that fits the criteria of using a Lapidus rule, right? Okay, so if you want to continue, you will have to go ahead and differentiate the top and then differentiate the bottom. And here we go, you put the limit as theta going to zero. And now you will have to answer the question, the derivative of sine is equal to what? And yes, I know the answer is cosine, but suppose you don't know about that. In fact, you will have to go through the definition of derivative, which is right here. The definition of derivative of a function, you will have to use the difference quotient and you will have to just work out the limit, right? So now the question is, how do we take the derivative of sine theta? Man, let's go ahead and do the work right here. So the question, well, what's the derivative of sine theta? By definition, we can answer that. This becomes a limit question. The limit as h approaching zero. And then you will have to do the function and then you do theta plus h, right? So we have sine of theta plus h and then minus sine of theta all over h. Again, the definition of derivative. Now, check this out. In order to work this out, we will have to expand this guy. And here we go, I will just tell you, this is the limit as h approaching zero. All right, for this guy, sine of two things adding inside, this becomes sine of the first times cosine of the second, and then we add cosine of the first times sine of the second. This is not cosh, this is not shinx. This is cosine of h. This is sine of h, all right? So don't get mixed up with the hyperbolic uh, sine function and trig function and all that stuff. Anyway, and then we have minus sine theta at the end, and everybody is divided by h. So far, so good. And now have a look. If we look at this, because it has minus sine x, sine theta actually, and then right here, we have sine theta as well. We can kind of just group them together and we can factor the sine theta. So that would be pretty nice. So. Here, it becomes, yes, we still have to write down the limit as h approaching zero. And let me just go ahead and put this and that together. And in the meantime, we will factor out the sine theta. So let's go ahead and do that, sine theta. And we will just have to multiply by cosine h minus one. So that's pretty good. And then over h, right? And I'm just gonna put this over that. So we have plus cosine, theta times sine h all over h, like so. Okay, pretty good so far, huh? Now, here's the deal. We have two things inside of the limit, and when we have the limit of the sum, it's the sum of the limit under the condition that both limits exist, and they do exist, which will start to continue. Well, we are in the h world, meaning that theta is just like the constant, you can put it outside. So first off, when we have the sine theta here, we can put it in the front. So we have sine theta, and then we have the limit as h approaching zero. And this becomes just cosine of h minus one over h. Here, we are just going to put, let's see, we have the cosine theta here. We can put that in the front. So we have cosine theta, and then this is the limit as h approaching zero and we have sine of h over h, right? Sine of h over h. And let me just emphasize, have a look right here. The h is the input, the h is the input, all right? Hey, have a look. This is the limit as h approaching zero, sine of h over h. Isn't that what we are trying to find out right here? It's just like, huh, we use theta there, and we use h here. And then it might be bizarre. <clears throat> what should we do with this? 
Well, you see, this right here, we are stuck in the sense that this is totally called the circular reasoning. Why? You see, in order for you guys to figure out the limit right here, you use the derivative. But in order to figure out the derivative of sine theta, you actually have to know that limit in the first place. So you are going around the circle. That's no good, that's bad, that's really, really bad. So here, you see, please just cross this out. Don't ever use the Lapidus rule for this limit, right? Don't ever use the Lapidus rule for that limit. I will be so much happier if you guys show me a table of values when theta is approaching zero and just plug it into here and here, and you see that the value of the function will, approaching, will be approaching one. I'll be much happier if you just do it on the calculator rather than do it, on the, rather than do it with the Lapidus rule. Seriously, please just say no to that, right? And also, as I said earlier, please also don't use Taylor series. So what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of people, once they get to Cal 2, once they have seen the Taylor series, when they say uh, limit as sine theta approaching zero, well, on the top, the limit is theta approaching zero, and here we have sine theta over theta. And yes, they know that sine theta is equal to what? Well, by the Taylor series, this right here becomes theta minus theta cube over 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth power over 5 factorial, and so on, so on, so on. This is in Cal 2, right? But the problem is that unless well, actually, you don't know. This is just a big problem for that. Don't use this either. Why? Because in order for you guys to show that sine theta is equal to this, you actually have to rely on the derivative of the sine function again. So, no Taylor series either. Do not do Taylor series either for that, right? And now, you might be wondering, why exactly do we do that? The truth is, you will have to do a geometric proof for that. And in the end, you end up that this right here, the value is equal to 1. And here, after you figure out this limit, the classical way, or the absolute right way, you, act, you can actually use this to figure out that, and the limit for that is equal to 0. So, have a look. Sine theta times 0 is just 0, and then cosine theta times 1 is, of course, cosine theta, right? So you see, the derivative of sine theta is equal to cosine theta, but again, to figure out this limit, you will have to do some geometry proof. So I'll just say, do geometry proof for this limit, right? So hopefully this right here clear things up. Yeah, I hope this video really, you know, set the tone and, you know, please don't use stop your rule. Yeah, anyway, that's it.